Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Sifu Messiah. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links can be found in the description for everything we discuss, so let's get on with it. This week we take a look at Anvil Aerospace, delve into the human flyable scythe, plus the Reliant ship package winner is announced. So we had a new 10 for, this time it was 10 for the artists. I have only included three questions as the majority of them were. Sort of like how you, how do you handle negative comments? If you are interested in becoming an artist or anything along those lines or even interested in what they said, please check the link below for the full 10 questions. Anyway, starting with the first one, will there be a customizable helmet or armor in the PU? Possibly to buy alien looking or mech looking armor or helmets. And they say the last three months they have been making sure characters are really customizable there will be multiple helmets multiple armors loads to choose from and to customize with but they're not sure about the limitations on alien races but he did promise to make us all an alien hat or a vandal costume which actually would be pretty cool if he had a fancy dress party on say the 890 jump one of you could come dressed as a vandal who knows the possibilities are endless with that so second question is will we be able to have high specular faux chrome paint jobs sort of a polished aluminium or aluminum and they say sort of like a fully chrome ship it they could do it, but they wouldn't want to, as it would just wouldn't be the best for the art. It just they say it doesn't look good. But it sounds like they would be fully capable of doing it. Or maybe they said instead of having a fully chrome ship, just maybe having little parts of the ship made from chrome to give it that sort of a glow. But they don't really say much more about that. So final question is: Will objects in space move and rotate as currently they look frozen? And it says they're currently not moving because it's very heavy on the physics networking code and it needs to be more optimized. But things in the environment will definitely be moving be rotating so do not worry it will look wonderful anyway that was the only three questions i picked out let's get on with around the verse so on to around the verse episode 49 it started this time with a new empire report and here it is coming up on the empire report peace talks on charon 3 collapsed last night sparking heavy fighting in both states Dellen governor tarquin class cites the attack as proof of archeron's desire to continue fighting Ship insurance scams reach an all-time high. With millions of credits on the line, will the UEE intervene? If so, what could their involvement mean for you? Controversy in the fashion world. Hawksworth's spring collection turned more than heads today. Lido Gary is live in London with all the details. All that and more on the next Empire Report at 2200 SET. So after that we joined Ben alone again and they say that the scythe will be included in the next arena commander patch which is very exciting this is the new flyable human flyable scythe also they pointed out that the vandal void bomber which we saw earlier this week or last week i believe it was is capable of carrying anything from torpedoes to boarding ships and the boarding ship in the vandal fleet looks very scary i think it was one of the released assets or the leaked assets so i won't mention anything more about it he did mention that the fps module still has no date but they are getting the netcode up and running and it should not be too long Long, and they are really striving to get it up for the PTU very, very soon. Chris Roberts is still in London working on the mocap PCAP shoot. Again, they say it's going very, very well. It does look, from what we've seen so far, very cool. There was a little sneak peek from Chris Robert, who couldn't make it to E3, but he had a little video message for the PC Gamer panel with a little video, and this is the video. I'll put it up in the background. It does look very cool. So news from around the verse, starting with Santa Monica CIG. They say they are preparing for Alpha 1.2.0 release, which is the FPS module. They are doing a full weapon and item balance path and they say this is full top to bottom so everything is getting balanced. Also Zane is working on the Vandal Scythe and showing us how the Vandal tech can come into human hands and we will see a bit more on that later in the show. Also they wanted to point out to do with the ghost system. Now this is pretty cool. The ghost system is a game object state which allows you to choose, pick and choose what you want to do around your ship and they say they're integrating it into the lighting system. So to start with if you get damage on your ship you'll get a few warning lights indicating where the damage is if it got a bit more extensive damage you'll hear sirens and then there'll be pointers sort of lights pointing you to the nearest escape pods they also say that on the cooler side of things if you open doors or power up the vehicle then headlights and cabin lights will switch on and also if you walk into the room the lights will come on nearest you and as you continue through the room they will in sequence start switching on very very cool it would look really cool by doing it in your own hangar so over to Ilphonic and they say they are working on a couple of new grenades they're starting from scratch 
scratch with these new tactical grenades. They didn't mention what they were, but if you have any ideas as to what they could be, please put them in the comments. Also, they're working on the network optimization, which sounds like it's one of the biggest things. This and net coding seems to be the more important things. They're trying to get fleshed down or fleshed out before they release it. They said before only eight players would work and any more players within the game would actually crash the system. They found within the CryEngine system that there was a cap limiting this and they've released the cap so hopefully the player count can be increased but to what level we don't know yet. Anyway over to CIG in Austin and we just met with a new lighting artist who is working on everything to do with lighting and getting it all up to par. Not really much said there so we'll move swiftly on to Foundry 42 and these guys are working or they're just talking about the Shuban interstellar mining base and they say these guys are world building on the Shuban and it is a six kilometer long mining base. They say there's lots of landing pads pretty much more than 20 is the I think what they actually said and obviously everything is in really high fidelity first person detail they say it's completely seamless so you can fly down land on the landing pad go into the airlock without any loading screens and then explore so it's it's huge it's epic i really can't wait to get inside that base and it sounds like it may be part of the initial squadron 42 missions where maybe you have to find out what's happened there maybe the vandal have attacked it we don't know but it does sound exciting anyway from there we met with james Pugh, who was interviewing gage hallman who is an associate 3d artist now he was one from the next great starship and he was team shimapan who a lot of people think they should have won so they've now brought him in he is currently working on the scythe getting the internal structures together so great to have someone of his talent on board and anyway, if you want to know what he has to say please check out the links below to around the verse episode 49 and you can find his interview using their quick links as well so from there we went to lisa ohanian who is doing the ship shape talk and i really really love these talks because it really gives us an insight into what's going on with the ships getting some sort of sneak peek pictures but this week she was talking about anvil aerospace and in particular she was just explaining the style guide and showing us what it means to create create an anvil aerospace ship she did give us some background history apparently it was founded in 2772 in terror and it now is in or the headquarters are now in nova kiev today so it is known for its relationship with the uee military and every military campaign in the last two centuries has actually featured an anvil ship she says they have factories on 36 uee core worlds and the hornet has destroyed more enemy hardware than all navy ships combined and again i'll put up the little clips now of the style guide very much like the gallanson style guide we saw previously also we saw the first official showing of the f8 lightning there were some leaked assets of the f8 lightning but this is the official showcase or the official picture first picture we've seen officially and she says coming soon is the crucible which is very exciting i think that is the mechanic repair ship and so after lisa ohanian's post as said before it was zane bn who is the ui designer and he creates the user interface for many of the ships that we've seen if not all of them i'm not too sure about that but he is responsible for all the ui that we see within our ships and he's just talking today about the vandul ui and how they're going to make it sort of humanized now he says that when they're making it the ui shape language is sort of aggressive so it's got that really aggressive feel to it it's sharp the language is sharp and tribal looking and this little clip here you're seeing is the vandal ui will boot up first when you enter the ship but it will glitch out and reveal the human ui afterwards but also if you are hit or take damage then the human ui will glitch and you'll see a bit of the alien ui so after we finished with zane bn we went back to ben and he just points out that they're collecting backer pictures so and if you're a backer if you've pledged to the project of star citizen then if you send in a picture to them it can be anything to do with your rig your face anything at all provided you're wearing clothes you say they're going to collect all the pictures up and for the around the verse 50th episode they're going to show as many off as they can there's a link in the description to the thread to the forum where you should post your images there's also a scythe q a thread as well because they're going to do the usual thing where they answer your questions in regards to the scythe so if you've got any questions regarding the scythe itself please put them in that forum and see if you get them answered also there was a new jump point released for all the subscribers and on a bigger note Note, there's a free fly for every ship for everyone so if you have backed for the game get into arena commander and you can try out every ship that is available to fly at the moment so the sneak peek is a ui panel which is for mining and it seems to show you things like the weather for a certain location i can't explain what it all means but we know it is a mining ui panel so tell me your thoughts on it 
Anyway, that was around the verse. Again, like I said, tell me your thoughts on everything discussed. So we're having a scythe Q&A over this week. I'm not sure how many posts there will be. Currently, we only have one and it isn't labeled part one. So there's probably only going to be one, but let's get started. So the first question is, will the UEE military shoot every scythe on site? And they say, no, ship recognition is more complex than just according to its silhouette. If you're broadcasting a Vandal IFF signal, then you may want to look out. But this will only really apply to AI, as they say that certainly players, as you can imagine, will likely shoot on site if they see a Vandal ship. Obviously, if you see a scythe right in front of you or approaching you, you're not just going to wait for him to open fire. So we may have to now scan ships to make sure that it's not going to be a human involved in the actual ship. Pretty cool. Anyway, next question is, how would someone capture a scythe within the game? And they say, to capture a native scythe, you need to knock the shields down first, carefully disable a significant portion of the main and maneuvering thrusters, and then kill or incapacitate the pilot. They say, they intend this process to be a significant challenge to all but the best fighter pilots so that's pretty much me out of the uh, out of the equation but that does sort of bring up an interesting question about incapacitating a vandal pilot i mean are we able to hold them in the brig god knows it would be kind of a scary uh, scary scenario having a, a vandal in your prison but it would be cool anyway next question will other alien ships such as the jian scout have their native alien ui glitch through in a similar manner to the scythe and they say that it'll all depend on the ship an alien ship produced under license like the Jean Scout will have seamless human designed interface. When the backstory is different and the ships are modified for example like the Banu Merchantman then you, you may see similar touches like little glitches here and there. Question after that is once the Vandal language is finished will we be able to fly a scythe with its native hood? And they say that they do not currently have any plans today but never say never. They say if it's an easy task then it's something they'd like to see included further down the line and I hope that goes for most things so if it's something easy they can put in then they might as well do it. Next question is can non-Imperator subscribers rent a scythe with REC? And they say the current plan is that the Imperator scythes will be assigned via a badge rather than a specific amount of rental equipment credits. And they also mentioned that the scythes will only appear in Arena Commander and not the Persistent Universe which I didn't realise. So I don't think they'll have the human flyable scythes in Arena Commander. I think you'll have to actually capture one and have the alien language up on the display. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see about that one. Anyway, moving on. Any idea how to secure a scythe after disabling its thrusters and killing the pilot? And it says there are several ways. First one being you can use a tractor beam to carry it onto a larger ship for repair or you can EVA and repair it and then board while in space. But it says you will at least need to get the engines up and running before you can get it back to your hangar etc. So that's pretty cool. I can just imagine doing that. Next question. Other than the HUD and ergonomic changes, are the NPC and player variants identical? And they say that both ships are identical in terms of specs currently. In the future they will be balanced independently. And they say not to give the player an advantage or a disadvantage, more to represent that the Vandal produced scythes will change as time passes, which is pretty cool, while the existing player version would remain the same. But theoretically, the scythe sort of mark two, if that's captured, its abilities will remain for the player rather than it becoming the older model that we that we already know of. Very, very cool. So next question is, will you be able to actually ram other people with the blade wing, or is that just the law? And they say, at present, the wing is non-functional, but the goal is to have it working in the game and also have the AI to use it as well. So they will use that against you. Next question is, will there be any gameplay that requires the use of a Vandal? And they just wanted to point out that they don't see anything in the Persistent Universe as being required. So whatever you want to do, you can do it and it doesn't require anything really. Well, apart from obviously things like mining, you may need some mining equipment, for example. But they say rather there may be situations like traveling behind enemy lines where it would be helpful. Also, the law does include a scythe racer, which is pretty cool. So moving on, how will we move it in our hangars or in the ship landing bays? And it says it can be moved around just like any other ship. So there's no real difference there. So next question is, is there any Vandal ships smaller than the scythe? And they say, yes, currently the Vandal lineup includes one light fighter, which is called the Blade. But they do envision adding more Vandal fighters all along the spectrum as the game world evolves. So through the time or the course of the Persistent Universe, we will see all these different ships coming in. So second to last question is, can we use the Scythe to get into Vandal controlled space? So this goes back to the previous question. And they say that flying the Scythe is just step one. There will be more to sneaking behind enemy lines than just having an alien ship. They say you'll need to do more work. For example, they said, 
outside having the proper codes or the IFF signal. Not entirely sure what all that involves, but it sounds like it's not just going to be, I've got a ship, now I can get anywhere I want in space. Because obviously the U the Vandal, I suppose, law or people may scan your ship and just check that you are who you are. Just like they would do, like the UE police would do with us, maybe. So that's very cool. It's obviously going to be a lot of game mechanics behind just sneaking into the Vandal space. So final question is, will the Scythe be very modular? And they say, no, weapons and upgrades for the Scythe will likely be extremely rare as few human companies will profit from making them, which does make complete sense. They say upgrades will take the form of extremely limited human manufactured add-ons and then the Vandal weapons and equipment collected by scavengers. Very, very cool questions with some excellent answers. Tell me your thoughts on it all. What's your opinion? So also this week we met with Eric Kieran Davis in Meet the Devs. There's a link below to hear what he has to say. We had a new Plain Truth titled Clinical Trial and this is a follow-up on the recent outbreak of lynch fever in the Goss system. There does appear to be more to it than meets the eye. Bug Smashers episode 4 is out. Again, link in the description. And as heard on Around the Verse episode 49, all of the current flyable ships have been released to all backers to test out. Get yourselves into Arena Commander and tell me what your favourite ship is so far. Finally, the new Jump Point is released for subscribers, so get reading. So the time has finally come. Last month we announced we had a Reliant ship package to give away and to enter all you had to do was be a subscriber and comment with anything you wanted to say. Anything at all. Now we had around 600 entries which was phenomenal but there can only be one. So we use a comments randomizer to pick our winner and that winner is... Vilgot Fredenberg, who said, want that Reliant so bad. As simple as that. Also, you got it. We will be in touch. Congratulations. Don't worry if you didn't win. We shall be doing more giveaways in the future. Okay, so on a final note, we have affiliated with Razer as we feel they make excellent gaming products. And if you want to help our channel out, plus buy amazing hardware, use the link in our description and we'll get a little kickback every time a product is bought. So yet again, we have come to the end of the show. I just want to say a big thank you to all our subscribers and a massive thank you to all our patrons. You are truly helping our channel grow. If you are interested or able to help us out in way of a monthly donation from as little as $1 to any amount you deem fit, check out our Patreon page in the description. This really, really helps our channel to create more videos, better quality videos, and it allows us to get better hardware, better software, plus it allows us to spend more time on creating the videos. Don't forget to subscribe, comment if you have anything to say, show me the love by hitting the like button and share it with all your friends and enemies. Thank you for watching and I shall see you in next week's show.